My favorite thing to do in virtual reality is to is to look and be in virtual photogrammetry environments. And the new tech on the block is Gaussian splatting or nerfs, a separate tech but similar. So is that is that going to be the new medium that people do this virtual tourism with? I'm going to do a direct comparison today of my own creations in photogrammetry and Gaussian splatting work and we'll we'll compare the pair. So we'll go to my bridge underpass in Melbourne, Australia. This this photo scan was mainly done using a lidar scanner. I've done done very quickly and cheaply, but it's uh, somewhere that I could get to to recreate in Gaussian splitting to do a direct comparison of. So, with photogrammetry or traditional 3D modeling, it's all done with polygons, which you know has its advantages and disadvantages. We'll talk about that more when I compare this to the Gaussian splat of this same location. So today I went through with the Luma Labs application and I walked along here and I recorded it on my smartphone and made a Gaussian splat of this same location. And I'm going to load that up now in an application called Gracia VR. Um, links it to all of that in the description and we're going to do a direct comparison and then talk about how I feel about the difference between standing in polygons in VR and standing in, in splats and just a, a renderer so we'll, uh, we'll try and do a nice transition here And here we are, viewing our splats in the Gaussian VR viewer. Now, I didn't do a perfect job of, of this, I don't think. But what you're looking at here, for people who may not, may not know, uh, there's, there's a lot of mathematics that I don't fully understand going on with this viewer, but it's a point cloud that has been converted to a bunch of splats which are these ellipses that use a, a Gaussian wave in order to determine their shape, their opacity and their color based on the view angle of the camera and their size. Um, and are able to do a few extra things, like if they're too uh, too transparent, they just disappear altogether. Um, and when you've got enough of that, you you get this sense of being in 3D. Now, again, this is this is my favorite thing to do in virtual reality. Well, I used to say my favorite thing to do was to be in photogrammetry environments. Now I have to change that wording. My favorite thing to do is just to be in photorealistic environments. And if I look over at this bridge, at the end of Princess's Bridge here, this is better. This, this looks so much better than my little scan of uh, from a smartphone. Um, which, I, I guess so. I guess it was always going to look better than that. But it even though I'm not rendering uh, it is difficult it is difficult because my little my little polygonal topology brain can't wrap its head around this entirely but this is really neat this is really neat is the main thing so I did two Gaussian splats of this you'll notice that this is not dense in some places um, and I believe there might be a size limit 
on Luma Labs. So I've done two different versions of this. I've done this version where I've done the whole side and now we see out here. And my gosh, this is this is really good. And then I've done uh, another version where it's just facing this angle. So it's a little bit high a little bit higher density and looks a bit better, so we'll look at that next. But the advantages to this is that I'm looking out here and I've got a sense of depth out there. And everything, I mean, it's a little bit blurry, but don't mind that. Someone who's better at making splats would make this better. Everything looks accurate. All the, especially the leaves of the palm trees down there. I can see the leaves of the palm trees. I ain't doing that in photogrammetry, not that far away from the camera. Um, so there's, there's that advantage. Now, there is some disadvantages to Gaussian splatting. I think the most common uh, thing that people talk about is if you were to use this for a video game, then there's the example of what if I open a door? in the video game. Now this Gaussian splat, all these all these splats, they are, are changing their gradients of, of various different parameters based on my viewing position, but not based on what is happening in the world. If I open a... if I'm in a dark room in a video game and I open a door and the place is made out of splats, it, it has to retrain every moment that this door is opening in order to uh, change the lighting coming in through the door because that's not what it trained on and so that's that's one way that that doesn't help um, Gaussian splitting but I don't know people might work a way around this I don't know it's very new technology as for the time being I I think I would prefer looking at 3D stuff in this app than any other VR app. Now we'll go and have a look at the higher density version of this just to give a nice, nicer example. One moment. Okay, now you can see I've just done this small portion here. I'm not sure why the background uh, buildings didn't work here, but especially this part, this is just a thousand times better than my photogrammetry version. A thousand times better. We'll, we'll try and do a, um, a little side to side here. I look out over there even up at the bridge. This is so much bloody better than than the photogrammetry. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. Now, I'm not sure that the Luma Labs app or really any Gaussian splatting uh, software right now um, is, is designed for huge, large open spaces. A lot of people are just doing a scan of one thing, a single uh, single object. So we'll have a look at that. So here is my friend's fireplace. As you can see, it's all the detail is put into this one thing, and this is still this is still using the splats. This is still the mathematics. It's just a lot more dense. And if you could have this level of detail in a large environment, I mean, that's kind of what a nerf is, but you're not really seeing that in real time just yet, though there is some Google stuff. Um, this is not a very evergreen video. Everything I'm saying is, is changing at such a fast rate. But my main comparison is, is this better in VR? Now, the answer is yes. In, in many, many different ways. So, for example, look at this little this feather here. 
you're not doing you're not you're not rendering this bloody feather or the uh, or the little bits of this fan any other way at the moment with this fidelity in in live time in VR. I'm running this on the index at 120 uh, hertz, and it is smooth as a whistle inside my headset. So yes, I'm just wrapping my head around the fact that I'm looking at not something without structure and yet boy does it have it boy do i i feel like i could grab this there's no there's no controller in this application um but i feel like i could touch these candles wow wow uh it will be very interesting when vr chat starts implementing something like this i mean th there is already um a unity plugin for viewing Gaussian splats, so uh, w would would VR chat users want to be in an environment like this? I don't know. Maybe. I guess it depends on where it's been scanned. Probably not just my friend's fireplace, but other places like, um, for example, this splat that I made in Sydney, looking at the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Now it was it was actually just for this tree. That's why the Sydney Harbour Bridge is a bit broken. Uh, but this is such a cheap way to make a great representation of a location. If I could just import this to VR chat and say, hey everybody, come come have a look at where I live. This this is Australia. This is where I'm from. Not from Sydney, but just being able to show people this oh my gosh virtual tourism amazing absolutely incredible so there's still a lot of work to be done with like animating it if you wanted trees rustling you can do that with polygons just fine animating things i've seen some work uh, and I'll, I'll link it in the description below of animating this stuff but right now no, you're going to be looking at still things. You'll add music. Um, in Unity, of course, you could you could have these trees be polygonal and waving in the wind, and just have the the background being Gaussian splat if you wanted. That's always an option. But yeah, as far as viewing environments in VR, this is so wildly better than anything else anything else at the moment it is crazy so wildly easier I'm working on this this location in VR at the moment here's some little snippets of it that I'm working on and it is taking weeks and weeks and weeks for a, a huge data set in order to compile this and render it out and add all these things this tree I walked around it three times and, and and this is what I got if I spent more uh, attention on it then it would look a lot better but I just walked around this tree three times and now I'm standing here again Wow okay this was supposed to be like a comparison video but it's just turned into me. <sighs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um. I mean, look at this. This is this is a friend of mine. That again, I just I just walked around him three times, and now and now he is perfectly preserved like this, and I'm looking at him in virtual reality. This has to go somewhere. People, people have to get being able to render Gaussian splats in virtual reality. Now, there's, there's always going to be uh, better things that, that polygons can do. 
right now. It's not going to entirely change the industry, such as the, the door scenario that I mentioned. It's not going to be perfect for most video games. But if you have, I don't know, like a video game where you're looking at a still room and then you walk up to the door and then there's a loading screen and you're at the next door, that type of small thing, this would be perfect. This would be absolutely perfect. But right now there's still just so much more um, so much more customization in topology in in structure rather than in uh, this rasterization of mathematical uh, point cloud nonsense that is a Gaussian split that polygons will still will still be the main thing but my gosh this is going places so in conclusion most everything in the tech world goes the path of cheaper and faster and if it is taking me more than a month to complete this where I could walk around a tree three times and give you an okay experience. People are going to go with the okay experience than waiting a month. So let me know what you think is the future of viewing things in virtual reality, just rendering splats, or will there be a, a healthy balance between that and topology? Or are you just scared of the whole thing? If so, that's that's fine. I'm also I'm also scared. I'm always scared. But, like on the edge of a precipice, that little gut feeling keeps me excited about, about tomorrow.